They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The prosthesis. Simka, over here. Take a look at what I found. <clears throat> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. Aha. Uh, uh, oh. uh -huh. Let's try to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little teddy bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait. It's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. The human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together, and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. Help is on the way. Hello, Professor Eugenius. Ah, I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What? Have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis, a new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn-out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. In gadgets and devices, our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day, when there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tish. Inside will be Tish. all day. Things right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. You found him for me. 
And you fixed him. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's just like Grandpa said. A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And pff, we're new. No, look, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There is a one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The barcode. And so. What do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it or not help us find it. <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. Wow, look at all these boxes. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Mm, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. <laughs> If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. 
And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In the refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. Sign I happen to discover They have three fingers in the air And flash it to each other They send their greetings to you They sing them and they shout But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out The Wires Ready for your lesson. Be quiet. Quiet down, please. Oh, it's so hot here. In today's class, we'll learn about... Uh, Whoa! What was that, huh? It must have been an earthquake. Yeah, it was an earthquake. Hooray! Eh, sorry there, Professor. Ooh, I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <laughs> Now then, where was I? Oh, right. Today? Oh! No, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Uh, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good, so just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Fixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves fixies, helps us any time we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Over here! Uh, no, here. No, like, come out. Let's do this. Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, just one more time! Stop it! I can't get out! Loosen the wires! We need to pull out this one! Stop this nonsense, will ya? Thank you, Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there and then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The 
this green wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. I found another wire no one's using. Oh, uh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Molik, why are you so upset? Because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan, and his kettle, and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another, or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, uh, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. Uh, I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look. Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it. Go away. You go away. You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now 
what? I see run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. Now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. La 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 la. Then she starts dancing. These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daddy! They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The eco tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa, what is it? An eco-tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. <laughs> to grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look. This one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. Aha! Uh -huh. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. 
I can get a watermelon to show you. Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. <laughs> Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars, and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we uh, test these apples ourselves? Uh, Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. <gasps> mm. Elisa, don't eat that. Uh, oh. Lisa, Lisa, Elisa, stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, Elisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? This is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me! I poisoned someone! Yes! With an apple! Fire! I mean, poison! Oh! Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> The key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kettle's back in action. TV! Oh, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm, then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius! You forgot the key! You must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. <laughs> to open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, 
There isn't any code to memorize because the code is held inside the card's memory and the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. Elisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag, then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor da Eugenius, dee dee the water's boiling. Fantastic. ta ra ta 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 cha 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 Wait a second. Ah, oh no. I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, oh, I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. Hey, what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh, <sighs> Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, uh, then who were you talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? Where? What? Uh, uh. What was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, uh, that, it's a uh, telekinesis. Uh. It's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> <gasps> Was that done with your mind, too? The door? Yeah, sure. You are a genius. <sighs> Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Vixies. He always helps the Vixies, and the Vixies are happy to help him, too. Professor Eugenius let the Fixie set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Fixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested. From computers, phones, and furniture to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us pixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? How? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked, and... Tidish. Very clever. That's a real tidish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. Fixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There is Wow. Hey, slow down there. 
I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> well, well, fire. Again, risking your life. And super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt, because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection. Like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah. But how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! Grampus, he needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid! As you fixies say... Tish! Today's lesson is done. Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design to use there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so... Caution and care make accidents rare. <laughs> Fixie schools and study to be masters. 
so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The antenna. Wow, is this cool or what? Ah, hello there, little fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. Since ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> Ready. If I could talk and now what? The aliens. If the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate, get hungry, and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Ah, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nolik. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. Now, uh-huh. Oh, 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 no, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Did, did, did it? Here we go. Nola, Simka, let's see if we can pick up signals from outer space. Where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now. Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Did you? We all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Hmm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! This is sensational. It means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? <laughs>
Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. Greetings to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sensor. This part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way you can keep on working. All right then. Only remember the code for the part. A8375. I'll remember it for sure. Why is Lisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened ah! and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. This door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. Sensors are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I 
turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. Titties! <laughs> Professor Eugenius, mission accomplished. Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ah, uh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. All right, we'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor! Stop! You don't! Forgive us, we didn't mean it. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. Chess. Hmm. How about that? Then I'll play my pawn. And I'll play my pawn. <laughs> Grandpa's, we need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport, but the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look! I found it! Yeah. Uh, hey! What's going on? <gasps> That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh, Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah. I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go. Class. So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... we're gonna knock over yours. Take that. Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. No, get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. And how do they move? Only one square per move, and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. 
Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Hmm. I'll move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Aha! Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, Lick! Forward! Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward! Aha! Next I'll go and capture the knight! He got away! All right, Pawnin, once more! Go forward! Gra Grandpus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere! <laughs> now you're the queen! What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen! Get back here! In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> Now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pawn for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. All you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius in a checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out.